What I'm going to show you how to do today is use FreeDNS for DNS hosting. So I'm going to go to freedns.afraid.org and I've got to scroll down to the bottom where it says sign up. And since I've already signed up before, I'm just going to use a dummy account. And send the activation email. And here it is. So I'll click on this activation link. Click subdomains. Add a subdomain. And I'm going to choose cool AG86 at moo.com. And for this demo, I've created a VPS instance on Amazon AWS. And the IP address of that instance is 23.21.189.117. So I'll put that as the destination address. By default, it picks the address that it detects you're coming from. And save. OK. Now I can ping coolage86.moo.com. As you can see, I'm getting a reply. So now. I will SSH into that Amazon instance that I have running at that address. Ask me if I'm sure to use this domain name I've never used before. Yes, I'm sure. And now that I'm into the VPS, I'm going to go ahead and create an index.html. And now I'll start a simple Python web server. It's just a static file server that uh, comes with every installation of Python. I'll start that on port 80. I need to be root to do that, so I'll sudo. And now, if I go to poolage86.moo.com. So now we're able to access our web server at the given IP address using a domain name. This is a great alternative to using Etsy hosts when you're not just doing local development, but you're doing some type of beta development where you want other people to see it as well. I don't recommend using FreeDNS for a production environment. There's a couple of caveats. Um, in particular, services like FreeDNS that are available freely online and pretty anonymously, there's no um, credit card validation or other type of, of um, identity verification where what you're doing can be traced back to you, some of those services will be blocked by government agencies. So anything you're doing like that, if you're working with a government agency, you're probably going to want to go with a paid service that's US based. Um, paid services that I really like for DNS are name.com and Gandhi.net. I'd recommend um, transferring your domain there if you're using someone else that you don't feel is simple and easy to use. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend GoDaddy, partially because their user interface is extremely complicated and I hate using it every time, and partially because GoDaddy was in support of um, the laws that they were trying to pass in the United States that would allow the government to have more control uh, delegated to the, the media industries for regulating the, the internet. Um, for paid hosting, I would not recommend Amazon. It's great for doing a screencast demo like this where you can turn it on for a couple hours and turn it off. Um, but if you're if you're familiar with VPSs, I would not recommend Amazon. Um, I would recommend doing Thrust VPS. They're $5.95 a month or $6.95 a month, depending on whether you're buying the full year or not. Um, Chunk Host, they haven't been around as long as Linode. They're, Linode and Chunk Host are both 20 bucks, but Chunk Host gives you a little bit more for your money than Linode does. And I definitely would discourage you from doing anything that costs less than $5 a month because it's likely either a scam or a service that will be very unreliable. Um, 
Chunk Host does have a free tier offering, but you got to wait in the queue for months in order to get it. So uh, good luck to you.